The Pokemon world is filled with many fantastical creatures. From the vast lands, to the depths of the seas, and the limitless skies, it truly is an amazing world. However, there's another amazing world with creatures just as fantastic. Your world. The planet is filled with amazing creatures that have unique and impressive abilities. My name is Ranger Rai, and I'm here to help bridge the gap between the Pokemon world and your world. So please, join me as we go through my Ranger Logs and we talk about Pokemon and their real-world inspirations. Welcome, trainers! It's that time of year where the creatures of the night emerge from their slumber and make the sleeping world theirs. Their sharp fangs and long wings beat throughout the darkness and cause trouble for all that dare to enter their domain. That's right, we're talking about the rulers of the night, the bane of the many people who dare to enter dark caves! It's the Zubat line. Happy Halloween season, trainers, and hello to all those not watching during Halloween as well. I wanted to give you guys a sweet treat this year, and what better kind than some information on one of the most infamous Pokemon out there, and one of the most misunderstood. Before we begin, I just wanted to say thank you all for enjoying my content, and to encourage you all to like, share, and comment on this video. It helps this channel grow so I can keep making amazing content like this for you guys. I have so much planned for you guys, and I'm excited to share it all. But for now, let's talk about Zubat. This Pokemon is known for many reasons and has gotten a bad reputation over the years for rumors and mistreatment, and I wanted to shine some light on it and its inspirations. Zubat is known as the Bat Pokemon, for obvious reasons. However, the inspiration for its line is pretty straightforward. Zubat is inspired by the Vampire Bat species, very appropriate for the Halloween season. That does not mean that this is an aggressive species by any means. Vampire bats, as well as most other forms of bats, are relatively harmless to humans and most other creatures for that matter. Now before I continue, I wanted to let you all know that there may be some slight images of blood moving forward. However, I will keep it brief. So if you are sensitive to images of blood, I'm giving you a heads up now. Alright, so vampire bats are one of the few species of bats that feed exclusively on blood. However, they typically feed on animals, and the amount they take is surprisingly small. They are small creatures after all. Zubat, on the other hand, isn't much different, as they are one of the few mammal-based Pokémon that naturally know the move Leech Life, a move known to steal the HP of an opponent's Pokémon and restore its own. This is actually extremely accurate, because real-life vampire bats can only go about two days without eating before they need to feed again, so sucking blood is incredibly necessary for them to survive. Now, how about we discuss the name of these creatures? Vampire bats get their name from the creature of folklore, THE VAMPIRE. There isn't a lot I can say about vampires that you don't already know, but I can help break down designs and explain why this all works so well. Vampires are known to feed on the blood of their victims, as well as other things that I won't be getting into for this video, but I will say that they have been known to turn into a singular or swarm of bats, which already puts us in the right field. Now I want to discuss something about vampire lore that has affected Zubat's design and its livelihood. It's actually noted in the Pokedex that if a Zubat has prolonged exposure to the sun, it can become unhealthy and even burn its skin. This part about burning their skin is directly lifted from Vampire Mythos, as sunlight was considered a major weakness to a vampire. However, real-world bats don't have this issue and are simply nocturnal, as they are small creatures with irregular diets, and some of their best meals like bugs and small fish on occasions are easier to catch at night with less competition. It's also noted that if a Zubat is well trained and cared for, it can actually get past these weaknesses and actually do pretty well in the sunlight. Now, there's just so much to talk about when it comes to Zubat, but how about we discuss the misconceptions for a moment, and some of the negative views that have come, not from their nature, but from human interference. Zubats have gotten a bad rep for two main reasons. The first is that Zubats are pests, especially when you travel through a dark cave or through the mountains. Well, I hate to break it to you trainers, but Zubats are not pests. We are the pests. Zubats need a nice dark location to live in, and us humans have nice homes we build and spend most of our time in, while Zubats need to find a safe and comfortable dark cave to live in. Not only that, but if you haven't noticed, Zubats kind of lack eyes and noses. This is due to popular myths that bats are both blind and they don't smell, but instead use echolocation to see and sense everything. Now while it is true that bats do have the ability to use echolocation, they are definitely not blind and they can absolutely smell well. 
However, a Zubat has to live with its lack of senses until it finally evolves. Now, when a Zubat evolves into a Golbat, quite a few things change that are extremely reflective of both real-world bats and the vampire mythos. One major thing that I didn't mention earlier is the names of these Pokemon. Zubat isn't too amazing unless you are Japanese, as the zoo in its name comes from an onomatopoeia on the word Zubato, which describes a sharp object piercing something, like fangs. Golbat, on the other hand, is a combination of the words bat and gollop, which means to eat or drink quickly. It's also not too far off from the slang gulp, by the way. Now, Golbat is much bigger than Zubat, as its mouth is now wide open with much bigger fangs, and it has now developed a pair of intimidating eyes as well. But I'll get back to those in just a moment. I first need to discuss the other reason that this line of Pokemon has gotten such a bad reputation over time, and that is due to bad trainers. Mainly trainers from organizations like Team Rocket, or any type of team that tries to hurt people and Pokemon. Zubat and its line have a unique type combination of poison and flying. Because of this, they are capable of being speedy against opponents and inflicting quick poison damage, making it easier to subdue and defeat people. Zubat are not inherently bad. It's due to trainers like them that have taken advantage of these misunderstood Pokemon and given them a bad name. Something similar has occurred in real life for vampire bats. Keep in mind that only three species of the over 1,400 species of bats actually feed solely on blood, and even then, only on very rare occasions do they feed on humans. In fact, vampire bats release anticoagulants when they bite, and if you don't exactly know, anticoagulants are known as blood thinners, a medicine used to help with the flow of blood in people who might get blood clots, which can be very deadly if not treated. In fact, the saliva of vampire bats has even been used in medicine to help with the flow of blood in patients that have strokes. Bats are pretty amazing when you take the time to understand them. Now, Golbat is still a very interesting case as they have now become bigger and they do require more blood to drink, hence the gollop I mentioned earlier. However, there are a few physical and technical aspects of this line that call back to vampire origins. The first are the wings and eyes. This Pokemon has a larger pair of wings that it can wrap around its body, something that vampires tend to do on a regular basis, kind of mimicking bats, or before they transform. The eyes, however, are a more serious part of vampire mythos, as vampires were believed to put people into a trance, or even hypnotize people to do as they commanded. This is a parallel, as Golbat and its line are capable of learning moves like Supersonic and Confuse Ray, the former being a reference to its echolocation ability, and the latter being a reference to the vampiric ability to daze an opponent. Now, there isn't a whole lot more to say about Zubat and Golbat, aside from these two quick things. The first is that Zubat is capable of drinking roughly 1 ounce of blood, while Golbat can drink up to 10 ounces, which is more than it really needs and will usually become too heavy to fly, or will fly very clumsily if it does. The last thing I want to mention is the perfect choices of color for Zubat and its line. Zubat and Golbat are this nice dark blue color, which is perfect for a stealthy nighttime flying type. You see, this color isn't simply inspired by vampires or bats, but the color actually has more to do with ninjas, which actually makes a lot of sense why gym leader turned Elite Four member Koga uses both Golbat and Crobat on his team. You see, a pure black color would contrast against a natural night sky, but a more blue or even purple color could be easily more absorbed into a vast sky when illuminated by the moon. And since Zubat and its line are nocturnal and need to sneak around to get some sustenance from other creatures, stealth just makes sense. I learned this fact from a very knowledgeable Goomba. When Golbat finally evolves into Crobat, it typically has developed a strong bond with a trainer that it trusts or possibly another of its species, seeing as both the Zubat line and real world bats are very sociable creatures. A bat colony can range from the single digit numbers to the hundreds. Fun fact, did you know that bats are one of the few mammals that will adopt? If a younger bat is potentially separated from its family, other bat colonies can adopt them in. On top of that, bats partake in social grooming, usually a female bat and younger bats to help keep them clean. 
this could be a great example of a wild Golbat establishing a connection with another and giving it the ability to evolve in the wild. Of course, a trainer that forms a strong bond with their Pokemon is also a solid example as well. Pokemon, as well as real world animals, do their best when they are understood and given a chance to grow and be who they are designed to be. But that's just another amazing example of the close connections between the Pokemon world and the real world. Remember to follow me on Twitter and Twitch if you want to stay involved and see what I'm doing next. And I hope you guys have a safe and happy Halloween season, or any other season that you're watching this video. And remember to keep exploring, trainers!